Okay, now uh, you apply the boundary condition number one. U is equal to zero when y is equal to zero. As simple, just put u zero, y zero. Zero, zero, zero. C2 is zero. Right? Because this one is zero, this one gives you zero. So C2 is nothing but zero. Okay, now you don't have C2 anymore. You remove C2. That's why there is no C2 over here. You know why C2 is not there anymore? Because it is zero, so you don't have to put that. Now, you put at y equal to h, u is also zero. So you put u equal to zero, y squared becomes h squared, y becomes h. So this h squared plus c1 h is equal to zero. By moving it to there, you got this one become minus, minus, then h, so you define this thing with h, you get this h, okay? So you end up having minus 1 over 2 mu dp dx h, this one is your c1. You plug in back, you remember your c1 is this, right? So you plug this into that, you will have minus 1 over 2 mu dp dx h y right you get this now if you combine this and that you will have this one so this is the equation that govern your flow so your flow profile at any location can be described using this equation is it correct let's check at the boundary condition, at y equal to 0, u will be 0. Is it correct? y equal to 0, 0 squared, 0. h is any h, right? Time 0. So this one, 0 minus 0, 0 times this one whatsoever, it becomes 0. Okay, that one is easy because it is 0. Now what happens when you are talking about the top plate surface? This one become h squared. Square. This one become h squared square minus h squared. Zero. zero times zero, zero. Okay, now you have a correct answer. Okay, so next time I give you a question like this, you have done all the analysis, you end up having u is equal to something, how do you know that it is correct? Return back to your boundary condition. If you plug in your boundary condition, you get whatever it is, then it is correct. If it is not, if you have time, you redo. If you don't have time, pray hard. <coughs> yeah, you know why I put this parabolic profile? is because for this kind of flow, you will have a parabolic profile. Okay? So for that kind of flow, you will have this kind of profile, the normal profile that you see in the, in the flow. Any questions so far? Okay, if no question, most of the time the question is not derive the flow profile. No. The question will be, you are given this condition, you need to find the maximum velocity or you need to find the flow rate or you need to find the maximum shear stress or okay i can just point any point any location and you need to find the velocity on that location so that is the possible question which means even though you already have your this is not finished your task is still there Either to find the velocity at certain location or to find some other parameters. Okay? Usually u max q and u min. If you need to calculate the maximum velocity, what you need to find first is the location at which point those velocity occur. How to find the maximum 
value whenever you need to find maximum and minimum value it will occur when the derivative is equal to zero you know why you know why no idea when you have something like this right you know that the slope over here will be zero and slope is nothing but your Same goes for the minimum because it is a slope. That's why you need to do that. Okay? And remember, when you are dealing with the maximum velocity, when you do du dy equal to zero or du dx equal to zero, it will not give you the velocity. It will give you the location. So, you do du dx or du dy in this case, this is your equation, right? This is your u profile. You take d u dy, which means this. You take derivative of this to y. So this one become y square become y square become y square become become y. Okay, then I can be sure that uh, most of you will get zero for the equation. <laughs> y square, when you take the derivative of it, become 2y. Right? Become 2y. That's why your 2 here is gone. 2 divided by 2. This one become? Y. Become h. So you have this one. Okay, you rearrange it, you will find y is equal to h over 2. Which means for this particular flow, the maximum velocity will occur at the middle, at the center line of those spacing. Right? If you want to find the u max, you just plug in here. Okay? Don't worry about this, it looks complex because I don't give you the value of h. Right? In uh, your quiz or in your um, exam, the h will be given as some value. Maybe 5, 6, then you just plug it. So don't worry about this. This one is just a symbol. Okay? Any question until this point? No? No question? Good? Okay, now the next one is the so called flow rate. Okay, flow rate. But since we are talking about two dimensional, because we do not know how long or how wide is the channel, right? We do not know the length in the z direction, right? Because we said it is infinite. It can be anything from one meter to 100 kilometers to whatsoever. So the easiest way is to take flow rate per unit width. In this case, per meter. Okay? If you are to calculate that, the Q is given by integrating U from the bottom surface to the top surface. Which means you add up, you sum all those velocity, then you will get your flow rate. Right? Because your velocity is meter per second, if you take a summation along this, white or along the head you will get it as a meter square per second if you times one meter it will become meter cube per second which is your flow rate clear okay so now ah just an advice from the old man most of my students do not know how to distinguish between derivation and integration. So be careful with that. Okay? So if you are to calculate maximum velocity, you need to take the derivation. Then you get the location. After that, you can get your velocity. 
but for the flow rate, you need to take the integration of the u. Okay? So if you derivate, if you take the derivation of y square, it becomes 2y. Right? That is derivation. What if you integrate it? Y cube over 3. Y cube over 3. Y cube over, over 3. Okay, so you take the uh, integration and you integrate from 0 to h, okay? Again, I have to tell you, don't look at this one first. It looks complicated because I don't give this a value. In the quiz, in the exam, it will not be h like this. Because h will be some number. Maybe 5, maybe 3, maybe 2, maybe 1. So don't... Don't worry, this one will just be a value. This h will also be a value. This mu will also be a value, right? It will not be like this. So at the end of the day, it will be a very simple equation. Okay? So in this case, you will get this q. But I will not go through this. I don't want to spoil your mind by saying this one is the answer, no, but you know how to get it. Okay? So just integrate it from the bottom plate to the top plate, you'll get your flow rate. Okay? Any question before we proceed?